Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox here again. We're bouncing into lesson four of unit three, the last lesson on sports informatics. This unit, of course, is discussing other sports other than baseball. Here we're doing tennis and horse racing, which are actually even less well studied, at least in the documented literature I could find than the sports we just looked at. This is all part of big data application analytics. We have already isolated many areas you can pour in and make money in sports. So let's see what else is waiting to be plucked. Okay, so we're doing tennis and horse racing. And uh, we note the continual emphasis on spatial visualization, because there really is little discussion of how we translate the data, which is video data and sensor data, into predictions as to who will win the tennis match or which horse will win the race. So here we have Federer versus Murray. This comes from Esri, which is a, a well-known um, geospatial company. It likes doing things in uh, in, in um, the real world, three dimensions or two dimensions. It's uh, like the commercial Google Maps company. And uh, they have some plots, you know, of the stroke. Here we have a, a typical stroke of Federer versus Murray. And um, this is just visualizing it. And so they start off with um, the raw data with um, maybe an artificial uh, um, stadium placed to buy, buy it. And uh, unlike Google Maps, you can have various uh, layers, the ACES layer, which are red, and the outside, uh, outright service window. Well, look at that one, just on the corner, a real ace. Uh, the white neutral serves and so on. And uh, then you can actually put the court in, which is what we see. So this shows you how you can build a collection of images, finding different types of uh, Stroke and uh, also the paraphernalia, the players and the and the and the spectators in the court, and then you can link them together in layers, just as you can with Google Maps, where you choose whether you want the uh, satellite image or the map image or the track of info, track of information, super or, or the street scene superimposed on your map. This is classic spatial visualization. So here we've actually superimposed the um, um, actual uh, crowds, and here we have some real players. And this is just a plot, it turns out, of Federer's second shot placement. And again, it's not so clear that um, I guess uh, um, red are meant to be aces, if I remember. But here red looks like a screw up. Not, a, not an ace, so uh, I'm not quite certain. It doesn't say what the colors mean here. Again, this comes from Esri, the uh, commercial Google Maps company, who actually did maps a long time before Google did, but also before the web came along, and that's what Google uh, pioneered. Um, so this is a set of layers, the second shot layers. And here we have just all of strokes. And um, and I'm not quite certain if this is still the same players, but it shows you the rich visualization you can do. Well, due to juice from this visualization is not quite so obvious. What can be seen is you can really see how the how the ball flows and and. Uh, through the air and what its track is. And this all comes presumably from analyzing the video data. Because just as you can with baseball, this should be very straightforward to track the tennis ball with high speed videography. Um, here is just another, um, I found this um, blog here. This is. Um, and there's been, I gather, data from something called Hawkeye, which is again gathering all this data since 2005. But uh, remember in baseball, everything is open. At least not all the data is open. Uh, Vince uh, Gennario Gen Gen has some uh, secret data, which he works on from pitch FX and things. But a lot of the core data from baseball is generally available, so lots of people can work on it. That's not true for tennis. It's a, Presumably, the people managing tennis want to keep it to themselves, but they're probably incompetent and do a bad job. 
because tennis is notable for not doing very much with its data. There's interesting, a journal of medicine and science in tennis. Um, so it's uh, discussing injury, uh, serve variations during important points. So that's an obvious thing you can get from this video data. Uh, injuries, of course, is something totally different. But the serve, the variation of the services, and how services are chosen and which services are successful, is a classic type of analysis we saw in, in the other sports. Now we have for the last uh, slide just something on horse racing, and. Um, <clears throat> There's a system called Trackers. Well, this is the company which tracks the horses. The <coughs> it has a tag which is tracked. So this is a case where you don't analyze the video, though I think you could. I think with high-speed video, you can obviously pick up horses and jockeys quite straightforwardly. And you don't really need the tag. But here's the tag, and this tag location is telling you something which is, doesn't look true from the picture that the orange horse is ahead of the yellow horse. I would guess the yellow horse is ahead. But anyway, these are, and six is certainly behind, so that's this one. Uh, so this is this, uh, this was actually presumably not for prediction or anything. This is to tell the, um, the watchers of the of the horse race where the various horses are. Poor old horse two is way back here. It would probably not be seeable from the from a video which focused on these leading horses as this video here does. So this is an example. So I pointed out you had these two types of ways of finding out what was going on. Sensors of various sorts, and of course you need that if you're sensing what's happening inside a person. Uh, but also you can have position sensors. We had this uh, this clever catapult technology that put position sensors in uh, footballs. But this is we have the sensors on horses. So we always have this choice between video and sensors. And um, quite what's necessary depends on the quality of your image processing. Video appears to me, just from the uh, pitch FX uh, type uh, data, video appears to me to be, and also we had the um, NFL analysis from UC, uh, uh, not UC, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and that appeared to be able to find things from the video. So actually, with today's computer vision technology, maybe video is all we need. That's an interesting question to do some research on. This whole area, I think, is really quite exciting. There's lots of work still to be done, because most of these fields are quite behind. and. Um, at least they appear to be quite behind. They may be okay, but that's not telling you anything. But it's interesting, baseball tells you everything, more or less everything. Uh, enough that you can really make a uh, participate, but these other sports do not. So that's the end of uh, sports informatics and sports analytics. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's a little frustrating. There is no, there's certainly no book on the subject. Diamond Dollars is the only book I could read. And Diamond Dollars about the fiscal model for baseball and its implications in relationship to player quality, not on game results and player quality, which is the sort of heart of the sports analytics that's, uh, at least to me, is most interesting, where you get the machine learning and nifty uh, algorithms. Okay, great. That's the end of these uh, this single section on sports informatics with three units. Thank you very much.